Hey everybody, it's Brother Mechanic again here in the beautiful Tennessee. Check out what I got going for you guys today. This is a really awesome 1998, I think, Isuzu Trooper. This is like pretty much exactly the same car as the Honda Passport. They made like 97, 98, 97, 98 Isuzu Troopers were the same. This came with a 3.5, which is the motor you're seeing, 3.5 V6. They also made a 3.2. I got a bunch of customers that have these and as I say sometimes in my videos when it rains it pours you always end up with like plenty of Isuzu's to work on you know it's either Isuzu's or BMW's or whatever it is man you know I just always it comes in twos or threes I never ever see it just one usually at a time so anyway the point of this video is to show you guys what can happen if you don't keep oil in your car I tell people all the time you know if you want to make your car last forever it's not rocket science. All you gotta do is keep water and oil in it, okay? That's all you gotta do. You keep water in it, you keep oil in it. Don't let the fucking water overheat and don't let the oil just completely run out of your car. It's not hard, you just gotta check it every once in a while. Girls are really bad about it, and but I mean, there's a lot of guys that do that same thing. You know, cars are crappy, they're expensive, you know, they're not an investment. You know, property's an investment. If you want to invest money, go buy some land. Don't go buy a BMW and think that it's going to be worth anything more than what you paid for it minus, you know, you're using it. So anyway, this is a perfect example, though, of what happens when you don't check your oil and you just run it. This is a customer of mine. He's a buddy of mine. He was running down the freeway from Atlanta back to Chattanooga, where I live. And uh, it just died on him. And he called me and he said, man, I think it ran out of gas. And I said, that's possible. I was like, it just died on you? And he said, yeah. So he wanders off, gets gas, comes back, puts five more gallons of gas in it. It still won't turn on. And uh, the interesting thing is at the bottom, you know, it would spin over. He would crank it over, and it would spin over and spin over and spin over, but it wouldn't start. So, uh, you know, they towed it back here, and, you know, he spent a bunch of money doing that. And he gets to the shop, and I take it apart for him, and unfortunately this motor's ruined, but I want to show you guys why. This is a timing belt-driven car, okay? And as you can see, the timing belt would go right in here. This is the bottom, the crank. And this is your one of your cylinder heads right here. This is the driver's side, driver's side, passenger side. And as you can see, I've already taken apart the passenger side, but what's happened is, you know, there's oil in the bottom of the car and it's got a pump and the pump picks up the oil and it brings it to the top of the motor, okay? And so it brings the oil to the top of the motor and the lifters and the cylinder head and all the rotating assembly gets bathed in oil, the cams, it gets bathed in oil and it keeps it from overheating and just melting itself because this is an aluminum block and an aluminum engine. Aluminum cylinder head, you see everything's made out of aluminum. Aluminum doesn't like heat and nothing likes to run with rotate without oil or some type of lubricant. So what's happened here is that he's run it with probably a quart of oil in it, okay? And it got so hot from such, from oil starvation they call it, that it actually started to starve the cams, which are these things. It starved these cams for oil, okay? I'm trying to get, man, a good freaking picture for you guys. Okay, so basically a cam would go, one cam goes right in here, this is a twin cam, and there's another cam that sit right in there. And so as you can see from all this scorched, you see how scorched this all looks? It's all brown and nasty. Down here you can see there was a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil did trickle down here, but none of the oil made it up to this side of the cam because it's so far away from the oil pump. And so what it's done is it's actually destroyed everything. I don't even know if you guys can see that. Can you see how the cam, that's the cam bucket where the cam would sit. It just sits there and it rotates and these little holes, oil pumps through these little holes. You can kind of see them there. So when there's nothing pumping through them, it just absolutely destroys the aluminum. It just eats it to pieces. And there's nothing to give up, you know? So the metal just gives up and it just eats the shit out of the aluminum. So it ate all this up and destroyed it. Ate all this up and destroyed it. Because as you can see, it's stuck down in there. It won't even come back up because it's welded top to the top. In addition, the really cool part is right here. You can see how it is absolutely destroyed. Oil goes inside here and it, it coats the inside of this bearing. And all this is is an idler. So this is where your timing belt would run up to here and it'll spin in a circle and it just drives these two cams at the same time through gear reduction through that gear right there. But So this is bathed in oil all the time. Well, hell no, not when you don't have any oil in it. 
So look at that, it has just absolutely destroyed it. It's eaten it to pieces, and this whole cylinder head now is junk, it's trash. So, you know, now the question is, is the car even worth fixing? This car only had 120,000 miles. It made it 120,000 miles and it's junk. And so, you know, unfortunately that's just how things work. It, you know, is it fixable? Yeah, it's fixable. I mean, is it probably a good investment? I'd say no. These Isuzu's are worth nothing. They're worth like two or three thousand dollars. By the time I get a new cylinder head and tear, you know, both of the cylinder heads have to come off. It needs new head gaskets. The head on that side's gonna have to be fixed. And we're gonna have to buy a new one for this side. They're about 400 bucks. So you'll have probably a thousand dollars in parts in this thing, not paying me any labor. So, you know, you're gonna have maybe 2,500 bucks just in fixing this to get it running again. And that's the question, you know, the car isn't in that good a shape. So, you know, that, yeah, it's just one of those things, man, those dilemmas. And all this could have been avoided by just putting oil in the damn car. And I tell people this, the same thing, man, just put oil in the car, check it once a week, check it every day if you think that it's leaking, you gotta check it every day. I just want to show you guys what happens though. As that cam locks up, you know, as it's spinning, the engine's spinning over, the pistons are still moving down there, that part's spinning, this part's spinning, all of a sudden this side right here just slowly locks up because there's so much heat, it stops dead in its tracks. Well, that one stops relatively easy as well. The crank down there won't, okay? It won't stop. And this is the problem you run into with broken timing belts. This is a timing belt. You can see it's got teeth on it. Uh-oh, there's no teeth. Now are there? See that? And where this part was, was down there on that crank. And when that part locked up on the can on the cylinder head, it just completely locks up, stops spinning 100% and welds itself shut. That part down here just grinds the teeth right off, okay? And this is what you end up with. <laughs> a completely destroyed timing belt, you know? But this is also the same kind of thing they say that you can, you know, if your timing belt breaks, and I wish I had one to show you, uh, unfortunately I throw away most of my stuff, but I could show you where I've seen timing belts break that can, you know, even having, being filled with oil and being filled with water, not overheating and not running out of oil, they eventually just get old, and eventually, like this one doesn't have any bad cracks in it, but eventually they'll get cracks in this material, and the crack will eventually stretch, the belt stretches, and eventually you, you might be at a red light and you give it a bunch of gas and dump the clutch or just give it some gas and the timing belt just lets go and see all of a sudden there's nothing holding anything together so it just everything just goes wherever it wants and there's two different types of engines there's what's called an interference engine and a non-interference engine this engine specifically is called a non-interference engine so if the timing belt was to break like it did kind of and everything just jumps into wherever it wants to these valves will not hit the pistons because there's enough space, there's enough space, they call it deck, deck height, there's enough deck height to keep the two apart. That's a non-interference engine. If you have what's called an interference engine, it does what the name implies, Inter it interferes. The, the valves will hit the pistons and they'll bend up and they'll break and bend and they can punch holes in the pistons, they can do all types of crazy shit. And so that's the things that you guys want to watch out, man. I mean, you want to keep the damn water in your car, you want to make your car last forever, keep water in your damn car, Watch the idiot gauge, okay? Watch the idiot gauge, don't let it overheat. Make sure it's got oil in it. Don't run it without any oil. It's cheap, it costs $3. You just stop and check it. I know you don't want to, but it's part of driving a damn car. So, you know, check the water, check the oil, and do this. Do the average things, like the, the, the maintenance, you know? Like your timing belt's pretty serious. You know, you need to do it at whatever your manufacturer suggests. Usually you can find that in the glove box. If you have a Honda Accord or something, it'll say 90,000, 80,000 miles. If you got a Volkswagen, it's right around the same. They're all right around 100,000 miles. So, you know, am I trying to scare you? No, but I'm just telling you that it can break. You know, it's one thing if your car has 110,000 miles, that's not that much over 100,000. If your car's got 180,000 miles and you're still driving it and has never had a timing belt, then you're asking for, you know, disaster and you're asking for it to destroy your engine and pay me or somebody like me a fuck ton of money. And nobody likes to pay me. Nobody likes to pay anybody that's a mechanic. It sucks. They say the two things that people hate the most is uh, lawyers and mechanics. So uh, nobody likes to come visit us. But anyway, so here you go. That's what happens. Pretty awesome, huh?